Welcome, dear viewers, to Let's Meet, produced by the WCICO. I'm your host, Alex. Today, we are once again honored to have Kira as our guest. Hello, Alex. Hello, everyone. I'm Kira. I'm delighted to be back in the Let's Meet studio, and I'm excited to explore the charm of Chongqing with all of you. In today's program, we will witness Asian partners a gathering at Chongqing's Jiangjin district and feel the vitality of the new international land sea trade corridor. Hear the unique insights of a representative from the Philippines media about Chongqing. Meet a cultural heritage preservation expert, Piang Longchang, from the Dazu rock carvings. We will also continue to follow the journey of the couple vloggers, Justin and Alina, as they explore Chongqing. Recently, friends from nine Asian countries gathered in Chongqing's Jiangjin district to learn more about the new international land sea trade corridor. Although Dantian district in Chongqing is not located near the sea, it has developed a modern logistics system with highly efficient road, rail and river transportation. As a result, it is known as the main hub of the new international land sea trade corridor. Let's take a look at how our friends from Asians perceive Chongqing's openness and development through the lens of this trade corridor hub. As the host, pioneer and core area of Chongqing Hub for the Industrial Park, Chongqing is mainly committed to building a hub economic system based on modern logistics, with processing and manufacturing as the core and international trade service as the support. What is unfolding before everyone's eyes a highly efficient and convenient new corridor. It is home to two logistics hubs, the Luohuang Port and the Xiaonanya Railway Logistics Center, each with an annual transport capacity of 20 million tons. Surrounded by 11 expressways and reaching the airport in 15 minutes, it forms an international three-dimensional multimodal transport system of railway, highway, waterway and air. From here, real sea and model transport can reach the sea and cross the border in just two days, connecting with the maritime sea road. Cross-border trains can directly reach the hinterland of ASEAN in five days and Europe in 12 days. When we mentioned a post, uh, they often thought of the seaside in the past. Uh, but today we see such a huge inland port in the southeast China. In particular, there is also an uh, efficient multimodal transport system here, uh, connecting so many countries around the world by land and sea, which uh, made me very surprised. At present, the Chongjin train on the New Land Sea Corridor has opened more than 10 international and domestic channel brands connecting the Belt and Road Initiative. The radiation scope covers 124 countries, regions, and 532 points around the world. We also understand that Jiangjin is the same as our Luoyong Gongyeyuan Jiaqiang Cooperation with Laowo Tanalong in today's dialogue, we had the pleasure of interviewing Maria Cristina Junior Marlet, Secretary of the National Press Club of the Philippines. The National Press Club of the Philippines is an influential journalist organization in the country. Through promoting international exchange and cooperation, it has made significant contributions to the development of the Philippine media industry. Yes. In the interview, as the Secretary Maria Cristina Junior Marlet said, that Chongqing is a city of the future, but not leaving the past behind. Let's hear her unique perspective on why she made this statement. It's, it's very beautiful and I have to admit that it's it was my first time hearing about Chongqing and um, I can say it's a good um, mixture of old and new. China and the Philippines are big trade partners across yes. industries and sectors and one area that I would 
want to particularly put focus on is on renewable and renewable energy, green energies, um, particularly in the mode of transportation, because um, we are now making that transition to using um, to using more electric vehicles. And I think based on based from our field trips to to Great Wall Great Wall Motors. Um, I think it would be a good fit for us and um, the collaboration maybe with Chinese media and the Philippine media would be essential. It would be very helpful if you know us back home, us journalists back home could get more information from the journalists here in China on how it could be beneficial to the riding public, to, to the motorists and stuff like that. And just the other day, I was talking with someone from All China Journalists Association and we brought up the idea of maybe having this um, exchange program between Chinese and Filipino journalists. I think that would be a good start. You know, like they would send journalists in the Philippines and the Philippines would send journalists here because it would be beneficial for us to immerse ourselves in each other's cultures, in each other's um, daily way of living. And that's a good jump off point. Like I said, um, I was very impressed with how Chongqing was transformed and is continuing to transform. That's why it, it, it has gained that reputation of being a city of the future, but not leaving the past behind. And that's something that has really um, impressed me. And Chongqing would be a very good um, model for inclusive development. And, um, and it's something that us in the Philippines could like really look into because we're so much for the development, we're so much for um, going into the future. Chongqing is rich in history and culture with many treasures passed down for thousands of years. Behind these precious relics is a group of people quietly preserving them. Kira, how much do you know about the heritage preservation work? Well, I know that heritage preservation is an act of safeguarding cultural, historical and architectural assets. It's an important work to ensure those assets endure for future generations. Well, thank you for that. T today, we will meet a cultural preservation expert, Pang Losheng from the Dazu Rock Carvings Research Institute. He dedicates his passion and hard work to preserving the thousand-year-old stone carvings. Let's learn more about his story. From confronting thieves to battling the ravages of time, Peng Liuzheng, a cultural preservation expert at the Dozu Rock Carvings Research Institute, has dedicated himself to fulfilling his mission for 29 years. After leaving the military in 1994, Peng Liuzheng joined the efforts to protect the Dozu Rock carvings. In 2008, when the thousand armed Guan Yin at Dozu faced severe weathering and damage, he decided to become a cultural relic restorer as an alternative means of safeguarding the carvings. After more than a decade of rigorous training, he finally had the opportunity to join the restoration team for the thousand armed Guan Yin at Dozu. Peng Liu's Heng employs scientific and restoration techniques to combat the effects of time, slowing the aging process of the cultural relics. Simultaneously, he explores the method of replicating artifacts to breathe new life into them. Peng Liu's Heng plans to spend 10 years replicating around 10 classic sculptures from the Dozu rock carvings each year. His ultimate goal is to organize an exhibition of replicated works from the Dozu rock carvings upon his retirement, using these pieces to educate more people about this cultural treasure. <laughs> That's all for today's program. Thank you to all our viewers for watching and supporting us. And thank you, Kira, for your wonderful insights again. Thank you, Alex. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. I look forward to our next meeting. Let's meet. Showcasing new Chongqing to the world. I'm your host, Alex. Thanks for watching. I'm Kira. Goodbye.